Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn some game theory. Today's topic is the stag hunt and pure strategy Nash equilibrium, and I cover this topic in Lesson 1.3 of Game Theory 101, the complete textbook. Check the video description for more information about that. Here's the situation. We have two hunters going out to catch meat. There are two hares in the range and one stag. The hunters can only bring the equipment necessary to catch one type of animal, and they have to choose this equipment without seeing what the other one is going to choose. They can't really coordinate here directly. The stag is going to be worth a lot more meat than the hares combined. In fact, we're going to make it worth six units of meat, while each of the individual hares is only worth one unit of meat. But the stag is really tricky to catch, and the hunters need to actually both be trying to catch the stag in order to essentially trap it and kill it. So in order to get the stag, both of them have to choose the stag hunting equipment in order to be able to get it. In contrast, hares are really easy to catch, and so if you're a hare hunter, you can capture all of the prey without the help of the other guy. So if we condense this information into a payoff matrix, here's what it looks like. We have two players, player one, player two. Each of them can choose to hunt a stag or hunt a hare. If they both hunt a stag, then they coordinate and everything works pretty well. They get to capture the six units of meat and split it evenly between them three apiece. If one tries to capture a stag and the other captures a hare, like in this outcome right here, the player who's hunting a stag, in this case player two, fails because she needs the help of player one in order to capture the stag. And so she gets zero. Meanwhile, player one is left to capture both of the hares by himself, so that means he gets two units of meat. Lastly, in this outcome right here, both of them choose to hunt a hare, and so they split the two hares evenly, one hare apiece. Now, in the last two videos, we solved games by looking for strictly dominated strategies, but here that's not going to take us anywhere. Let's see why. Suppose player one knew that player two was going to hunt a stag. Player two in this case, or player one in this case, should also hunt a stag because three is greater than two. But if player one knows that player two will be hunting a hare, then player one should also hunt a hare. The reason is because if he hunts a stag by himself, he's going to fail and get zero. If he goes out and hunts a hare, then at least he gets one. So player one's strategy, our optimal strategy, is completely dependent on player two's choice. And the same is true for player two. This game's completely symmetrical in that respect. So player two only wants to hunt a stag if player one is hunting a stag, and only wants to hunt a hare if player one is hunting a hare. And so as a result, there isn't a strictly dominated strategy for either player here. Now, given what we know about game theory for now, we can't really solve this game in any meaningful way without any further rules to implement into the game in order to figure out what is a sensible outcome here. So we're going to introduce a new way to solve a game and understand what's sensible in that regard. And we call this Nash Equilibrium. So a Nash Equilibrium is a set of strategies, one for each player, such that no player has incentive to change his or her, strat his or her strategy. Now, a couple of notes about this. We only care about individual deviations, not group deviations. So if we're checking whether some outcome is a Nash equilibrium, we don't have to see if both players can collectively change their strategies to different strategies. We only have to worry about can one player change his strategy and do better, or can the other player change her strategy and do better. We're just worried about individual deviations, not group deviations. Now, the reason that Nash equilibria are compelling is that they're inherently stable. What you're doing is optimal given what I'm doing and vice versa. So this means once we've actually seen the outcome of the game, once we've chosen our strategies and the strategies are revealed, we don't have any regrets about what we've done. I'm happy what I've, with what I've done and you're happy with what you've done. We can't change our strategies in retrospect individually and do any better. So let's see this in practice. How does this work? Well, how do we find these Nash equilibria? There are four different outcomes here. So what we're going to do to see if any of these are Nash equilibria is we're going to isolate that outcome and look to see if each or if any of the players can individually do better by changing their strategies. So let's start out by looking at the stag stag outcome. Would any player want to change his or her strategy given that both players are going to be playing stag? Well, player one would not want to change his strategy because he's getting three for hunting the stag and only two for hunting a hare. So he's satisfied maintaining his strategy. And player two is also in the same boat, right? She, uh, she gets three for hunting the stag and only two for hunting the hare. So she's happy maintaining her stag strategy. And so we know that this outcome right here, the stag stag outcome is a Nash equilibrium. Every player is happy with this outcome. Neither player can change his or her strategy and expect to do better. Now this should be intuitive because the stag outcome represents the best possible outcome for both players, right? They both get three in this situation, and these three points is better than any other outcome for both of the players. So we should expect this to be a stable strategy, given that it's the best thing that both players can do. 
but we need to check to see if there are more Nash equilibria in this game. Games don't always have one Nash equilibrium. There can always be more than one Nash equilibria, and so we should really check to see if there are any more here. So let's take another outcome. Let's look at this outcome right here. When player one hunts a hare and player two hunts a stag, is this a Nash equilibrium? Is this inherently stable? The answer is no. Why is that? Look at player one's choice. If player one knows that player two is hunting a stag, we've seen this before, he's going to want to change from hunting a hare to hunting a stag because he can go from two and move up to three. That's a profitable deviation to change from hare to stag. So that means this can't be a Nash equilibrium because there exists an individual deviation that leaves that player better off. Now, we could just be done with that and not look to find any more deviations, but we could also note that player two has a profitable deviation in this case, right? Because she's playing a stag here and she's earning a zero but she could switch over to hair and she could do better that way. So this is also a profitable deviation. This is superfluous information if we only care about finding Nash equilibria, because we already know based off of player one's deviation that this can't be a Nash equilibrium, but we could have also shown it by looking at player two's deviation in this case. All right, so we know that this isn't a Nash equilibrium. What about this case up here where player one's hunting a stag and player two's hunting a hare? Well, that's essentially identical to the situation down here, and we can see that this isn't a Nash equilibrium because player one would want to change his strategy. He could go from hunting a stag and getting zero to hunting a hare and getting one. So that's a profitable deviation for him. That means this can't be a Nash equilibrium. And again, we don't have to check player two's deviations because as soon as we find a single deviation, in this case player one's, we know that this outcome can't be a Nash equilibrium. That leaves us with one outcome to check, which is when they're both hunting hares. So do any of the players have a profitable deviation given this outcome is going to happen in expectation? Well, the answer is yes. Look at player one's choice. Player one could switch from hunting a hare to, or rather, neither player has a profitable deviation. Player one can't switch over from hunting a hare to hunting a stag because he goes from earning one to earning zero. That's not good for him. He would be sad, he would be upset if he switched his strategy from hare to stag given that player two is going to be hunting a hare. Same is true for player two. So if player two expects player one to be hunting a hare, she earns one for maintaining her strategy and zero for changing her strategy. So that's not a profitable deviation. She would be unhappy if she did that. So that means this outcome is also collectively stable. This is a Nash equilibrium. So we found two Nash equilibria here. There's a Nash equilibrium where they both hunt a stag and there's a Nash equilibrium where they both hunt a hare. Now this one was obvious. This was much more counterintuitive because this is worse for both players than if they both collectively chose stag. However, when you're unable to coordinate like this, if your expectation is that you're going to be hunting a hare today, for example, perhaps outside the hunting range, it said today is hare hunting day. That sets this expectation in mind where both players are going to be hunting this hare. And so this guarantees that they're going to be doing something a little bit better when they're hunting hares. And as a result, this can sort of sneak in there and trap them into this inefficient situation where they're both hunting hares instead of getting the stacks. So Nash Equilibria aren't always efficient, aren't always good, but they are inherently stable and no one has any regrets hunting hares in this particular case, given that the other one is going to be doing the same thing. So that's why we search for Nash Equilibria. That's one way of finding Nash Equilibria. And in the next video, we will learn about what Nash Equilibrium is intuitively. Join me then.